I love bike packing. It's such a great way to enjoy nature and be out in the outdoors with my buddies and go camping and soak it all in. And I've had the opportunity to test a ton of different bike packing gear. And today I'm gonna to be reviewing a few different products from some of the companies that sent gear in to be reviewed. I just got back from a bike packing trip and today I'm gonna to be reviewing some of the gear that I took on the trip. Unfortunately, I didn't bring my SD card, so I didn't film the video of the bike packing trip. I've got pictures of it over on Instagram. You can check it out there. But I've been testing some really cool gear that I want to share my thoughts with you guys because it's a crazy world in the bike packing world. There's tons of bags, there's tons of options. It can get expensive really quick. And sometimes it's worth paying a little bit more for something better, and sometimes it's not. This year, my buddy Cody and I set a goal to ride the entire Arizona Trail, all 800 miles that are legal to bicycles, not at once, but in sections. This is my bike that I designed, the Binary Maniac. I made it out of titanium because straps are gonna go on it. And when you hit a whole bunch of washboards, even if you don't see movement on your bags, they're, they're vibrating and they're scratching paint, clear coat, carbon even. I've seen straps wear through carbon and, and make a hole in the frame. So for that reason, I personally don't recommend carbon frames for bike packing unless you wrap the entire thing in electrical tape. Some people are willing to do that. For me, I'd rather just have a tie frame that I can buff out at the end of a trip and it looks as good as new. So yeah, this is my size medium binary maniac frame. It's pretty slack for a bike packing bike, but I designed this to be my all rounder bike, not just a bike packing bike, but I also wanted it to be able to bike pack. This is the prototype frame. I've got a 150 mil dropper on it right now. Um, I love rear racks because I still wanna use my dropper, especially on trails like the Arizona Trail. And even without a dropper, I have a hard time fitting a seat pack in here without it buzzing. And I also feel like they flop around, they kinda of get in the way of your legs. They just don't quite work for me. I feel like a rack is a much better option. And for this trip, I have the Aero Rack. These guys have been around for a while, even though a lot of people haven't heard of them. They designed the Thule rack that I've loved for so long, and they actually sold the design to Thule. Well, it's been years now, and they've designed their own model, and it's this aero rack. It's simple. It works with tons of different bikes. It works with full suspensions. It works with hardtails. It's one of my recommendations for people getting started if they don't want to experiment with a ton of different things and they just want something that's easy and quick and easy to get them going, this is what I recommend. So this rack has these little cradles that can be mounted east to west or north to south. You can mount it on the top, north to south, east to west. I just have two on here. I could have fit three, but I wanted to keep weight down. When you have tons of bags, it's easy to fill them with heavy things. And my bike weighed in at 62.5 pounds for this trip. That's very heavy to pedal. We did 125 miles over three days with 16,500 feet of climbing. That's a ton of climbing. And I definitely felt the weight. So I tried not to go overboard and pack too much stuff. Now it doesn't normally come with the, these volet straps. In fact, I've got the same rack system up front. It just comes with these traditional nylon straps with a buckle that you cinch down. Now I've modified my aero rack. I cut off the nylon straps that came with it. They were too slippery on the dry bag that came with it. This dry bag is more like a river dry bag, how it's kind of plasticky. It's totally waterproof, which is great, but nylon doesn't grab it very well. And I could never get it tight and it would just shift around and make noise and kind of flop around and I didn't like that. So I cut the straps off and I've added these Volet ski straps. These are a staple for all bike packers. Every bike packer should have like 10 of these. They're so useful. One-handed operation. And this rubber grabs the rubberized plastic of this Aero dry bag really, really well. So this is how I ran it for my trip. You can cinch them down tight if you want, but I didn't need to. It doesn't go anywhere and it just grips it really securely. Now I mounted my bag like this because the buckle, when it was forward and I was coasting, with this foot on the in the back it would rub the bag right here and that little buckle was just annoying what you should probably do is mount it a little bit further back than I did but this ended up working for me another really nice feature is this I don't know if it was meant to be a handle but it can act as a handle for you to lift the bike and when you're bike packing you hike a bike way more than when you're normal mountain biking and it's nice to be able to pull from the back and lift the back around. 
Now, one disadvantage to a big rack like this is you've got this big tube here. So when you're hike a biking next to your bike, this is in the way and it kind of pushes the bike out and it's awkward. So in an ideal world, I'd want something less tubular shaped and a little more streamlined and square that doesn't stick out quite so much. That said, this is my current number one recommendation for a rear rack system for someone looking to get started into bike packing that doesn't have super, super specific needs. Up here, these are my Oveja Negra bags. I think they make some of the best stuff. I've had them for years and they're still going strong. You can pay more money for lower quality bags that do not last nearly as long. And so, huge fan of Oveja Negra stuff. I run their chuck bucket up here and that's where I put my water bottles. This just straps to the top. I run two. I've removed one so you can see my bike a little bit better, but uh, that's a must for me. Really like those bags. The frame bag is the most overemphasized piece of gear that people new to bike packing focus on way too much. I have small front triangles because I like rowdy frames that you can get the dropper out of the way, but most of my gear isn't carried in my frame bag. I carry food and water bladders in here and that's about it. And if I had another inch of space, it wouldn't be tons more useful to me. To me, my front rack and my rear racks are the most useful places to store things. So I don't focus a ton on the frame pack. This is made by Rogue Panda. They're from Flagstaff. They're local to me. And they have a really cool feature where you take a picture of your frame. I have a whole video to this if you want to learn about it. And they will cut a completely custom frame pack for your frame. This was meant for a different frame, for an RSD middle child. Another thing that we overemphasize in the bikepacking world are um, brazons or bosses, those little grommets, whatever they want to call them, where you can bolt water bottles or bolt bags to everything. Yeah, you can get a strapless setup, but that means every single bag needs to be custom because those bolts are not in the same exact place on every single bike. And when you're building custom bags like that, there's a longer wait time, it's more expensive, and I don't have a problem running straps on my bike, and you're always tweaking things anyway, like something needs to be moved a little, or this strap interferes with that one, and so I like the flexibility of a simple strap system. I don't overemphasize having your bags be bolt-on. I always run this underneath here. I'm running a Blackburn Outpost cage. This is a 3.5 two liter V8 bottle, I think. It's, it's over three liters. And it's the best way I've found to carry a ton of water in the desert. It's low, it keeps my center of gravity low, and it holds on real strong. So this is backup water or cooking or when I'm going long stretches between water filter spots. And then I run my two 700 mil water bottles up here. I'm running titanium bars. I'm running a titanium stem. None of that's necessary, but I love titanium because it brushes up with a Scotch-Brite pad and looks brand new. So if you can swing it, awesome. If not, no big deal. I've been experimenting with crank length a lot. And on this trip, I was running 160 mil 5 dev cranks. I love these things. They're machined in the U.S. I've got a coupon code for these in the description below. They come in a ton of different lengths. They come in different colors. They're made in the U.S. Beautiful, beautiful cranks. But I was trying 160s with a 30 tooth oval i love oval chain rings from absolute black i run absolute black ovals whenever i can on my bikes and with a bike packing bike that comes in at 62 and a half pounds i'm usually needing easier gears not harder gears that said whenever you're bike packing you do have road stretches and you do have stretches where you're pedaling at 25 miles an hour on flat stuff just to make your miles so you do need the wide range of a wide range cassette, but I think I could have gotten away with even a 28 tooth. Now the one disadvantage to these short cranks and a small chain ring is I now have lots of torque and I could spin the back tire real easily. And so for my next trip, I'm gonna go back to 165, see if that smooths it out. I was also slower on these 160 cranks. Cody had to wait for me a lot. And these helped me reduce body fatigue and knee injury and hip flexor overuse because it just kept me in an easy spinny gear, which I liked, but I was going a lot slower. So a little slower than I wanted. For the next trip, I'm gonna run 165s with this same 30 tooth oval. We'll see how that does. I think the little bit extra leverage is just gonna help me 
be able to keep my speed up a little more and not have to be in the easier gears quite so much. For tires, these are Terravail Coronados. They were not the right choice for the Arizona Trail. They spun like crazy and I had a hard time getting them to grip. And you really have to air these down to engage the side knobs. They have a very pointy, peaky center when you air them up. And it's great because they roll fast because you're just rolling on the center of the tread. But to get it to engage the side knobs, I had to air down a ton so that it kind of squished out and the side knobs were contacting the ground a lot more. They're not the right uh, tire for the Southwest. They worked great on my Colorado trail trip, but I will not be running these again on the Arizona trail. They had zero confidence in the corners. The front washed out a ton. The back washed out a ton. Braking wasn't great. Um, they look cool though, but tires are way more important to have traction than cool looks. I'm running my Paul Clamper cable actuated disc brakes on this. I love those, they worked flawlessly. I've got a big 180 mil rotor in the rear and a 200 in front and it was great. I'm testing the Ren Sports upside down fork. I will have a full dedicated review to it. I'm still working out some kinks and getting it fine tuned. I really like that you can bolt bags onto the fork and these are not, these are unsprung weight. And this is my favorite fork mount system. It's Ortlieb's fork bags. They've got a little metal attachment here and they've got really cool attachment points. So this fork doesn't have water bottle bosses. These fork mounts from Ortlieb came with these little metal ties that, that adapt onto there and they're fantastic. They're some of the best ties I've seen. But I just click these on and it's on. And these never moved. These hit hundreds of cactus and cat claw, which are like rose bushes. They're still waterproof. It's still strong. It's got reflective accents on the front. I love these little bags. They ride low. And because of the design of this fork, the bottom moves, but the top doesn't. So adding weight up here doesn't change your suspension performance. You still have that light unsprung weight of the wheel without the bags affecting the unsprung weight. So that's really cool. I'm a huge fan of these bags. Now up front is my all time favorite front bag mount system and it's by Aero as well, the same company that does my rear rack. Little bit heavy, but I will take this every single time. It also comes with the same bag as the back. One nice thing about Aero, and it makes a lot of sense if you're making a product that you're shipping out is everything's interchangeable, the cradle in the front, the cradle in the back, the bags, they're all interchangeable. It doesn't make for the world's best bag system everywhere, but it's versatile and it saves them costs to be able to not have to stock 20 different SKUs. And so I get that. These bags are hard to stuff because they're waterproof. I never quite get anything stuffed into the bottom and they're just kind of tight and they're a little bit the wrong shape for what I need. I've got a sleeping bag in this one, a sleeping pad system in there and some clothes. So I ditched the Aero Pack in the front for a Revelate Design Salty Roll. This is one of the best designed pieces of gear I've come across. It's super affordable. It's got this daisy chain on here. It's waterproof. It's the perfect size. It's not too big. It's not too small. And it fits right on the front with this arrow pack. I'm just slipping arrows clips through the daisy chain. It's a little bit tight, but it works. Get it through there. And then I cinch it down. And I do that on both sides. And this thing does not move. It's solid. The cradle up here does not move. It's real nice for cable routing. Some of the other front bag systems really smash your cables up here. It affects your shifting, your brake cables get put at weird angles. I hate that. This is very, very versatile. So I'm a huge fan of that cradle up front. That's another recommendation I make no matter what bike you have. If you wanna pay a little bit more and just get something that works that you don't have to fuss with, get that aero rack system for the front. But once again, I would swap these nylon straps out for volet straps. I just ran out of volet straps. So I'll be removing those and getting more volet straps for the future. And I'm also gonna find some type of lunch box. I'll probably use my Oveja Negra lunch box. Just a little, it's like an envelope pack that just sits on top. That's a really handy pack to have for first aid or water filter or real quick access stuff. One thing that really surprised me on this trip is it's been three days now and I'm still, I have numbness in these two fingers and I'm not a fan of that. I don't want nerve damage from long rides. 
The Ergon GD1s are my favorite mountain biking grip, but I don't love them for bike packing. So I'll be looking for some different grips for longer days. I really, really like the ESI Extra Chunky grips, but they are push on only, and I'm always swapping cables and brakes and shifters and stuff like that, and I need a lock on grip. So I'm on the hunt for the perfect grips. I've tried the Ergon ones with the wings, they're pretty good. Um, and I might try those again on the next trip, but uh, that's been my experimentation so far. 29 by 2.8s were good size. I like 3.0s a little more, but Cody was on 29 by 2.3s. I think he had Icon tires and he did fantastic. Now my buddy Cody, he's a professional rider. He'll do fantastic on any bike and he prefers a more lightweight zippy XC setup. And his bike felt very zippy and XC, but due to the amount of sand and river washes and just gravel that we came across just deep sand i really like the flotation of the big tires i like the extra cushion i like that it transfers less vibration to my body and so i like bike packing with 29 by 3.0s wherever possible but these coronados were totally the wrong tire tread for the situation for my bike computer i use my five-year-old wahoo element which is wonderful cody has the new Wahoo Element Rome, the bigger screen one, and he had much better battery life with his. So it's not, you know, my, my old one's working fine where I'm not going to buy the new one just to have the latest and greatest. But if I were shopping, I would buy the new Rome. It's a fantastic unit. They both function the same. Wahoo has the best user interface. They're the easiest to use. It crashes less than all the other stuff that I've used and it integrates with Ride With GPS, which is my main mapping software when I make these. So huge fan of Wahoo for those. I've got the K edge mount for my top cap for my Wahoo just clicks on there. That worked beautifully. Drivetrain's a MicroShift Advent X 10 speed. I got some creaking in my cassette and I think it's the pins that rivet together. And I should do a better job cataloging which cassettes I'm writing and how many miles each one has. I have like seven of these cassettes and I'm always swapping them between bikes and I can't remember which one's which. So this cassette could have a thousand miles on it. It could have a hundred miles on it. I'm not sure. Uh, that's been a small complaint about my MicroShift Advent X is creaky cassettes and Cody's was creaking too. I don't know if dust just got in there. It sounded like a really dry chain, but we lubed the chains and it still kept going and it was definitely the cassette creaking. That said, it had no performance issues. It still shifted great, has a great range, and I'm going to keep using it. But if it keeps creaking like that, it's going to make me sad, and I may have to look into going back to GX, which I love. It's just hard to be able to afford GX for my nine different bikes that I have. That'll set me back a pretty penny. Anyway, I'm a huge fan of titanium frames. The Binary Maniac crushed it. This thing was very comfortable. Slacker than most bike packing bikes and probably a little bit slacker than ideal if I were building it just for bike packing. You could throw a plus one degree angle set in there and I think it'd be perfect, but I don't want to do that because I want it ready to ride for everything. And this is such a fun bike and it performed way better than I thought it would bike packing. In the future, I'm going to build my own custom rack on the back that'll be more streamlined with pannier bags. I'll share that process with you as I get there. But every time I go bikepacking, I'm refining, I'm testing a new piece of gear, I'm moving this and moving that and, and loading my tent up front, then I'm moving it in the back, then I'm putting my water over here. And I've learned a lot through the process. And if you want to save years of time learning the hard way and learning the wrong way, or pick my brain on all the different pieces of bikepacking gear that I've used, or if you need help picking the right bike for your bikepacking adventures, or you don't know where to get started and you need someone to help guide you through the journey, I'm here for that over on Patreon and I'd love to help you there. Patreon.com slash hardtail party. Thanks for getting nerdy with me today about bikepacking. I'm curious, have you ever tried bikepacking? You ever spent a night touring on your bike where you carried everything you needed to survive for a day? It is so much fun and if you've never tried it, make this the year that you at least try it once. Thanks for watching everybody. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.